In this video, we're going to look at configuring an AIM Solo 2 using the Race Studio 3 software. So right now, this is the instance of Race Studio um, that I have loaded uh, on my machine. And I also have my AIM Solo 2 switched on um, and uh, ready to connect to the, the, the computer. So as uh, an AIM Solo 2 is Wi-Fi enabled, the first thing I'm going to do is go up here and I'm going to click on this uh, Wi-Fi um, indicator here. And if I click there, what's going to happen is that I'm going to be presented with an option and a series of um, uh, Wi-Fi signals that are available. For the purposes of this um, video, we're going to look at downloading data from an AIM Solo. And you can see down here, we actually have an AIM Solo that's available. This is the one that I have switched on and is my uh, AIM Solo 2. So I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to click on connect. I'm just going to give it a minute or two to uh, work through and connect up to the device. And uh, as it's doing so, um, we're in a position to be able to say, is it connected or not? So let's have a look up here and we're now connected. Next thing I'm going to do is actually going to start looking at uh, what information I have about that particular device. So the first thing is, is that I'm going to click on this button right here. It says devices. If I click on that, give it a minute or two to be able to think about what's going on. And it's going to be looking for that uh, AIM Solo 2. And when it's found the device, it will show up under the connected devices list. And we'll be able to start working from there in terms of working through information that's available to us. And so um, you can see here that the connected device is there. You can see it's named uh, Coden Solo 2. I've actually gone in and actually changed the name of mine because I'm often working with multiple uh, devices and they've all got very similar names. And so I'll show you uh, how to do that and to work through it. So first things first, the easiest way to be able to do that is to click on the device itself. You can see here I've got a really good signal strength. So I'm going to click there and it's going to start working through connecting to my device. It will show me any live measures that are coming from the unit. Now this is particularly useful if you have your um, device um, more advanced AIM device uh, that may be connected to variables that are, are being sent um, directly from the vehicle. So uh, if I had, let's say, an MXL2 connected and, and the vehicle was uh, switched on, I maybe see um, live measures of RPM uh, or I may see live uh, temperatures uh, that are coming through from the device itself. This is a Solo 2, so we're just basically getting all the variables that it's seeing right now. So this is the first thing. Next thing we want to be able to do is to be able to go in and change some of the variables uh, and settings on the device. And so we're going to go uh, first and foremost to Wi-Fi and properties. Now under device name, this is the first place where you'll be able to go in and actually be able to change the name of the device. This is very useful if you're in a garage and there's more than one of you who's using a Wi-Fi enabled device because this will not only be able to identify yours because it'll show up on the screen of the device, but the second thing is it'll also make sure as you're looking for uh, uh, devices in the Wi-Fi here, you'll be able to see uh, different devices there and know which one you're connecting to. All of these other variables, pretty straightforward, auto, access point, all those things are there. So you can change the name here. And then what you can also do is you can go in and set some details for the actual device. Now, if you left these blank, this would be up to you to put in when you download the data. But if you're doing a championship or let's say your device is connected to uh, um, permanently connected to the same vehicle. So maybe not so much in a Solo 2, but if you had, let's say, for example, an Evo 4S connected uh, into a car, uh, chances are that's not going to be mobile. It's unlikely that someone's going to pick that up and put it into another car on a regular basis. So you can specify some properties. Here I've specified my Solo 2, that it's connected. Uh, the racer's name is my name, James Coburn. We got the vehicle name and number. Um, uh, you can put in anything you like in these buckets. Uh, and then the championship is uh, Formula Ford 1600. I'm leaving the venue type blank though because I will do different venues and I'm not always going to be doing racing or I'm not always going to be doing generic testing. But again, if you wanted to, you could specify the properties. Once you've changed that, all you need to do is go up here, click on transmit, and that will tr send the information that you've just uh, configured directly to the device. So now all of a sudden, instead of it showing up um, as an obscure name from a Wi-Fi point of view, now it shows up as your name. Um, and every time you download data, it'll have some of these information specifically already pre-populated. Just saves time downloading. In addition to that, we have some other variables. We can click on settings. Here we can put in information like what format I want for the date, 
um, what color I want for the uh, backlight as an example, the time zone um, is daylight savings on. This is also very useful because it's helpful as you're um, you know, looking at uh, information, uh, you're looking at timestamps in terms of when the data was captured, uh, those sort of areas. In addition, you can put additional information in here as well. Um, uh, tracks, this just shows which tracks are loaded. You can see it's thinking about because I have a few in here. Um, I've actually pre-populated my uh, Solo 2 with all the tracks in the United Kingdom right now. Typically, these devices now come with all of the tracks loaded on them and they come with sizable memories. But if you're using a device, let's say in a long race, like an endurance race, space is a premium and if you're only racing four or five tracks a year why fill the device up with you know thousands of tracks from around the world and so you can go in uh, and this will show you that the, the the tracks that are loaded what you can also do is you can go up here um, where it says tracks and this will show you down here uh, the connected devices and if i click here it'll show you which tracks are on my um, device here and then i can drag and drop and i can move devices from the full collection that's available uh, for a main and you can see here that they have 3761 tracks uh, that are available we'll do a video later on to be able to look at how do i manage my maps but for right now that's uh, the information when it comes to tracks finally as we look at it there's additional um, tabs across the top logo just allows you to load your own logo on there uh, i don't have one uh, i just wait for the default aim one to be there and then the last thing here is firmware now i'm actually using the latest firmware that's available but uh, if I were connected to the internet, now we're here, I'd be able to see if there were a new firmware update available. And if there was, uh, I could actually uh, see a little um, blue um, uh, badge here that would show me it's, it's, it's two arrows that are in the format of a circle. It would show me that there's an update available for my device. And so this is how to configure your Solo 2 to be able to get it into a format that is right for you and uh, get it into a place whereby it's useful every day at helping you download data and be able to work through different settings and parameters that are very specific and personal to you.